All right, so I got uh, some of the old parts apart and I thought I would try and find a way to demonstrate how bad these were, how used and how much they were out of play and totally makes sense now why they broke. So anyway, I've set up this dial, as you can see here. I've got it centered at about zero. This is the, uh, the main part of the, of the uh, screw. So if you were to turn that, it would screw out. So that basically it's bottomed out, which should be its strongest position, right? Got it at zero now. So what I'm gonna do is put my finger under here and I'm going to lift it until it stops. There's one, two, three, almost that's about as far as it goes with so basically four complete revolutions around and that comes out to be like a half an inch of play you know if you can look down here at the at the bottom that's how much play there is so once I get the new one installed, I'll uh, come back to this exact same experiment and we will see what, uh, what comes from that. Next, I'm going to set up the same dial and try and get a measurement of how far the sprocket is moving. If you can see that, look at all that play. So compared to the new one, which this is an easy test, it doesn't move at all. So I'm excited to see what that number is as well. Be right back. Okay, so I got the micrometer set up um, in a way that I think I can test the amount of play in the sprocket on the horizontal axis. So. This is how I have it set up, and I'm no machinist, so please bear with me. I'm just, you know, a redneck in his kitchen. But you can see I have it set up right there on that sprocket. And we're at, what, pretty close to zero. Close enough here that we can get a pretty good estimate of how much it's moving. All right, you ready? I'm going to push on the opposite side of the sprocket. It's completely depressed at this point. And we're going to go, let's see. Trying to hold this at the same time. All right, there we go. Well, as you can tell, it's pretty loose. So that's how much it's wiggling back and forth, you know, on this axis right here. And when I move this one, there is absolutely zero play in that compared to these ones that have all kinds of play in them. So I'll tell you what guys, if you have a, a sky wagon pretty much any year that uh, has never had these gone through or looked at, I highly recommend it. Um, you know, these are some old airplanes with a lot of use. You know, think about every flight, how many times you adjust that trim wheel, you know, and times that by the amount of hours on that airplane. And there's a lot of, a lot of rotation up and down. So, um, it's not the easiest thing to change out, but I highly recommend it. So, all right, I'll continue with uh, tearing this thing apart. Be back when I have more info. All right, guys, I got the first one rebuilt and put back under the micrometer so we can take a look at the difference. If you remember on the last one, obviously it rotated, I think, four times. So we've got a set back where I had it before. Full pressure on the shaft. And as I pull up, that's all I'm getting right there. Pretty significant difference. Well, it got 46 years of use or 44 years of use, so I think it did its job 
but it's time for new ones. Alrighty, so I've got the first one completely done. So it's all back together. I got the new boot over it, the new jack screws in there. The only parts that are reused is the collar for the boot and the original aluminum housing, which I inspected. Uh, no cracks, no damage, everything seems good. I need to safety wire those screws back in before I install it back in the airplane, but that's at the hangar, so I will do that tomorrow. So, here's where our issue was. I still am not seeing anything major that caused it, but this screw right here, I don't know if it's just from dirt or whatever, that this housing screwed into for the elevator to go up and down was locked up. I had to put a screwdriver through the hole and a, and a pair of pliers on the sprocket and use all my force just to get it off. But I got it off. So I think it's just worn out is the, the about the only way to describe it. Here's an example of a new one and an old one. Uh, McFarland's done a pretty good job of making a part better than Cessna did. Um, so for, as a for instance, let's see, that is the size of the roll pin that holds that sprocket on. And that's what caused all of our play. On the new ones, you know, I still got a zip tie through there, but it's three times the size of the one that was in the standard Cessna part. Um, not only that, but on this one, let's see if I can get this out here and I'll show you. Um, so this is the sprocket and that's the roll pin. As you can see it's small. The shaft is a male shaft going down into a female and that with a small roll pin seemed like it'd be strong, but you know, it obviously over 40 some years had its issues. This one is, here, we'll pull this off, I'll show you. This is a female over male, and it's a lot larger diameter, a uh, lot heavier duty part. And it's a better look at that roll pin uh, where it goes. So I will uh, start putting that all together. Um, when you take these apart, you'll want to take off the safety wire. And actually, let me back up a little bit. The first thing you're going to do is when this spring is here and this is on the inside. Uh, I didn't video it because I was fighting with it. But this unscrews, obviously takes the tension off of this big spring. Once you get that off, you slide it off and you're left with what we have in front of us. You'll pull off the uh, safety wire, which is what I'm going to do next. And then you take all these screws out, uh, inspect them very carefully. Uh, all mine from the other one looked really good, uh, but I will double check them just to be sure. Um, once you get that apart, then you've got to take apart the, uh, or press out the bearing on the inside. So let me get this apart and I'll show you what the rest of it looks like here in just a minute. All right, guys, here's a little update and I'll show you what I did to get things apart. So now that I got this here, I'll show you. This bearing is pressed down into this housing and this sprocket is held in, is in right there. So what you gotta do first is pull that roll pin right here. This one was really easy. The other one was quite hard to get out. Um, so I pulled that out and that would still be in there like that. And then since this part isn't being kept, I just took a, uh, you know, put it on a flat surface and, and with a hammer and a socket and popped it right out of there. And that leaves you with all the parts. So now what we'll do is clean these up inspect them really close make sure there's no cracks or damage or anything like that 
and uh, reassemble. So here's another good example of the difference in the kit from McFarland on the left and Cessna on the right. The shaft in which the spindle is attached is 0.263. So basically that's the, you know, that's the shaft is taking all of the brunt um, and transferring it to that little tiny, where'd it go? Little tiny pin. Now, <clears throat> this is the shaft. Let's see here, I'll do this one handed. All right, so that is 0.3775. Quite a bit larger, and like I said already, that roll pin is considerably bigger. Okay, so now I've went out and in the shop and I pressed in the bearing. Uh, it's a pretty snug fit. It takes uh, a little bit of pressure. It's probably only a couple thousandths from uh, being the same size. And then, as you can see, I inserted the roll pin, spring pin there, which holds on the sprocket. Now I'll take that uh, backing plate and it will go, I'm trying to hold my phone down, there my GoPro down. That'll slip onto here, this little collar here, uh, I gotta take this off and then that'll slip down over it. And then uh, and then it's time to put on the spring and the boot. So I'll come back and show you that in just a second. We're almost done. All right guys, so now we're almost done. Um, I put the screws and everything back in. Um, obviously they still need to be tie wired. Um, uh, safety wired, which I'll do that tomorrow. Like I said, I don't have it here at home with me, but uh, it's all ready to go back together. So now these very, very fancy, expensive plastic boots that cost 60 bucks, the way you hold them on on the top is you take the top piece of the jack screw and this goes into there. So what I do is I just pull that out I like to wrap the top of the boot just over the top of the of the of the of the spring and then this housing which I cleaned up it doesn't look the best but it'll work um, I take and I just try and press that on there I might have to back it up a little and anyway Takes a little bit of finagling, which I'll mess with that when I have two hands, but it comes out looking just like that. The bottom here will get, um, once it gets greased and safety wired, this gets pulled over. So the whole thing will look, you know, something like that. And then safety wire around that and holds that boot in place uh, so it can't come apart and keeps the dust and debris out of there. So, almost there. When I'm all done, I'll show you the final product. All right, so we got the jack screws all done and ready to go back in the airplane other than the safety wire. Here's the finished product. Also, it's recommended to safety wire the uh, pin into the sprocket as well. Brand new boots. And then I've also got the pieces that go in there. And that's it. So I'll film the install when we get to it in a day or so. Other than that, you know how you now know how to install and rebuild your jack screws. Have a good night.